So I want you right here like this. Yep. Holding. Yep. I'm going to literally start the engine. You walk it forward and push it, push it out. Okay. Okay, Carl. Push us forward. Okay, jump on. Last night we flew in right in the evening. There's actually quite a bit of smoke in the air right now because the BC and the Yukon, there's a lot of fires going on. So the weather's been really warm. The country that we're flying into here is just, it's rich with game. The goats, there's moose everywhere on the way in. And I know it's good sheep country. I've hunted here, I've guided here. So I know that we're in some of the best country in British Columbia, and I'm really excited about the potential over the next eight days for us to really work hard and see a lot of goats, and hopefully we find the one we're looking for. We came in at kind of evening light, and the mountains were glowing, and it was just beautiful, calm air. It was just one of those nights that you just love to be flying. Look at where we just flew into and it's just like... The hunt starts here. We're in Northern BC. This is my favorite area in British Columbia to hunt. This area holds great mountain goats. So we're after a big billy over the next eight days. And we spent the night on the lake and we boated across the lake today. And now we're gonna get our boots on the ground. This is some of the most beautiful country in, in Northern BC as far as I'm concerned. We're gonna head up over the mountain into another large drainage that has a number of basins in it, kind of up through all this timber. You know, I know there's a lot of great areas in BC, but this is right on the Yukon border. My idea is to get past this front range, get over top into the next bowl, back in a little bit further into where there's great goat country and sheep country as well. I've looked at the map and it's really showing some cliffy, craggy stuff where hopefully we'll find a big billy. We've got eight days worth of food. We're gonna try to make this happen in eight days and hopefully we're gonna get to look at a lot of billies and try to find the best one that we can. So literally only 200 meters up of bushwhacking and we hit this horse trail. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but we're gonna take it and we're gonna smile because it seems to be going in the right direction. So every now and again, it's the small victories. Even if it's 100 meters, it's 100 meters of a gift. You gotta love this. Can't beat an old horse trail. This is what happens when the trail you were on starts going in the wrong direction. You have to make that decision to get off the trail and get into the bush. Normally I'd be, I use trekking poles the majority of the time, but once you're in thick bush, they become more of a hindrance than, than they are good. I have trouble walking past prime blueberries. You get it while you can, because once we get up further, they're not gonna be there. It's like caribou, feet on the move. 
I'm just glassing up kind of in the area that we're gonna travel through so I don't wanna get on top of it and then, and then start glassing. But whenever there's a little open patch, I try to pull the binoculars up and quickly pick it apart and then keep moving and just constantly do that the whole way. White rocks versus just putting your head down and just going. Because if you just put your head down and you just keep going, who knows what you walk past. So once you're in the country, it's like you just have to slow it down, take your time, make sure that you see everything that there is. This is a good spot to glass this basin from. Take a few minutes here, fellas. There is a lot of white rock on that mountainside. I quite like the clarity of these binoculars, certainly under this light. The north side being in all that shadow is a little more difficult. Once we hit this ridge, I'm hoping I'll be able to see this whole bowl. That's the direction of travel. Perfect spot to fill up. We're going up through this pass. We're probably about right here. We're gonna be able to take a look at all this bowl back in here, which should be pretty awesome. I think for the most part, we're up out of that real nasty bush, so I think I can take my poles out. There's so much glassing time on these mountain hunts that, you know, the two important things are that you're fit enough to get up in here and when it's time to go that you can go and move fast and efficiently. And the other thing is that your glassing also has to be efficient. If you spend more time running through the mountains than you do glassing, then you're probably making a mistake. As much as I'd love to run through the mountains, I like to get animals better. Trail over there, Carl. Just gonna drop my pack and we'll glass from here. This is a great spot. This bowl is absolutely beautiful. Man, what an amazing piece of country. I love this. I don't uh, expect to see a lot moving around. It's 1.30, kind of the heat of the day right now. So kind of looking to try to pick out something bedded down. These mountains are being a lot more jagged and big boulders and everything. You really have to kind of pick them apart even though they are white animals and typically in gray rock, but I glass almost everything like I'm glassing for stone sheep. We've pretty much covered this bowl. I'm very surprised we haven't found anything in it. I would have swore that this basin would have goats in it. And obviously they can be hiding behind anything, but we spent two hours here now. Mind you, it is in the heat of the day and they could be just bedded down, but We've covered it hard. If we go through that pass. We get quite a few options here. Whereas this one, we, we also can see a lot of country, but it's spread out quite a bit more. Whereas this gets us right into the kind of the heart of what looks really, really good. I do like that ridge idea. So many options. I think it's certainly a good start. Like we come down, drop here for the night. Or just cut straight down. Move up and then frankly, like we just take a look and see what it really looks like. Yeah. And Once we get to that, to that yeah. call there then. Yeah. Now's the time when we should be glassing. But we'll get that up here, I think. It's just gonna be about that perfect light for glassing and when the animals start to move around, so. Like when we were over there, we couldn't see any of this side of this mountain. So before we continue any further, I wanna make sure that I cover the whole thing. I'm not seeing anything. We've chose a route that, based on the map, that drops us out of the Alpine a fair bit and puts us into the bush again. Lovely. I hate losing elevation. Our other option is to go back the way we came. All in all, I don't think that that was so bad. But we made it to the bottom anyways. So the plan is to drop down into this valley. We're gonna head to the north. We're gonna probably put in a couple more hours of hiking and then try to find a camping spot 
for the night, but more to the south looks more like sheep mountains, where to the north looks really rough and uh, should be good goat country. So we're just gonna keep on trucking and find ourselves a camping spot tonight, have a good sleep, get back and pack it all up and keep heading north. The way that these mountains are, it's just really kind of funneled us into the valleys. Just the natural tendency has been to, to stay low. And, and I think in this situation with these big, broad valleys that it's not bad to be down in it. We'll be glassing up these big walls. I definitely like to be high, but this is a bit of a different situation than probably normal for us. So we'll run the valleys and we'll see what we can find. We're gonna just put camp up here on this lake, be able to glass all of this in the morning. This is a pretty fantastic spot. Just as a piece of paradise right here. We couldn't find a much better spot to set up camp. So we haven't actually broke camp at the crack of dawn, but the reason for that is because we've been watching a billy up the valley since dawn. I'm not 100% sure on how good he is. He's a long way away, but the idea is that we're gonna head up there with light packs today. We're gonna keep camp here and really get a great look at him to make sure whether he is or isn't what we're looking for. And then if he's not, we're gonna continue on and do a big loop around and come back here, see what he is, but certainly cover a lot of great ground today. The weather's beautiful. So it's definitely cooperating, so we need to get a move on now. But I can't see him without sitting down and really picking it apart. He's not obvious. He doesn't appear to be super heavy. Heat waves are not helping the situation. He's just constantly moving, and he's been moving for hours now, so it leads me to believe that he's not old. As Billy is, I think he's just bedded down. So we've traveled up the valley here another mile or so, so we can get a really good view of him because we need to make a decision. <laughs> so that if he's not the one we're looking for, we have to keep moving. But there's so much ground to, to look at right here. So I'm gonna set up the spotting scope and really make a decision on this goat. Oh, he's back bedded down now. I can't make a call on his bases. <laughs> like, I don't know. The only people that really know goats are those coastal BC guys that that's all they hunt is goats. And they only know their goats, right? Like they don't know these goats. That's true too. He's kind of just continually on the move. I hope he's not making a move for that pass. Well, if he makes a move for that pass, then life will get a lot more interesting for us. I don't really have a good plan as to how to get him. We can't really.
really good question. Where is the goat? I don't know where he went. He's He could be down here. I felt like it was kind of the perfect stock. We didn't expose ourselves. You know, we came up a, a drainage that concealed us. We moved fairly quickly. We had the wind come kind of at our back and we were a thousand yards from him. We moved up and above him where we thought he was and we can't find him now. There's just a lot of rocks there and he could very well be bedded down in the rocks still. So he could have moved in here or down further. You just have to be patient and keep watching because if he is down there, he's gonna stand up at some point and move around and then we'll be able to pick him up. But I don't know where he is for sure. So I was looking over this side in case he went over the top. And I asked Carl just to keep an eye out down there. And Carl picked him up just laying over here. Good eye, dude. That is him, though, eh? I think so. He's looking right here. Well, we were fooled, or maybe we just uh, don't know enough about goats. I'm not sure. We basically had to close all that distance in order to be able to find out whether it was a billy or a nanny. What we thought was a billy turns out to be a nanny. Perfect. We needed the exercise anyways, and now we've got some elevation and we can continue to glass from here. But I'm just glad we double check. So we're looking at three goats. It's just a little bit too late right now to go after them because by the time we got over there, there'd be pretty much no, no light left. We're just gonna glass them and see where they go and make a game plan for tomorrow. Dropped in off the ridge, back down into the valley. We're gonna head back to camp now. We've seen a lot of goats today and we're gonna go to the west tomorrow, see if we can't take a look at a billy that we glassed from literally six kilometers away. I mean, it's a long way to make a decision like that, but we're gonna try to get over there and hopefully take a look at him tomorrow. Otherwise, we're just gonna check a bunch of bowls and get up high again and do some more glassing, but we gotta make some uh, tracks if we wanna get back to camp before dark. These are the days that I live for right here. So we're getting close now. It's one of those days where you feel that fall is in the air and it's cool, there's a breeze, and you can just feel that the colors are just gonna start to turn any day. Here comes the rain. We just gotta keep hard charging. We're making good time here. We've been out of sight for about 40 minutes now. The world is all right. This is the right place. 